All right, YouTube, today we're going to be talking about common spots that you can play on invasion, defense, and search and destroy. We're going to be running around the map showing you some simple spots that you can be using on defense just to get a feel for what you guys want to do in case you're in the situation where you're playing some ranked games and the other people on your team are taking the spots that you usually use. This will give you a good idea of where you can play on the other side of the map. So these will be the defensive spots on invasion, but obviously on the offensive side, you can use these as a guide to see what you need to clear before you start entering a site. So let's get right into it. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to draw everything on this big mini map here, basically guide you through everything that's going on with these different spots. And what I'll do is I'll put a picture in picture of the different spots as we're going through it to make sure you guys have an idea of how it actually looks inside the game. So we'll start at the bottom of the map here. This is going to be the Lamar Street side. We actually called this spot Nero just because he used this spot uh, early against us. So this is what you're going to see a lot of teams uh, when they're trying to just make sure that they're holding this A Street side, but they don't want to actually contest it from this tank it's just super easy to you know hold an off angle here so you have the entire a street for your team uh, and it's a really hard spot to actually get kill out of so if you want to stay alive if you want to just get info for your team make sure you have this cross you can play this spot a lot of teams do it the other street that you can play towards this a street side is at this lamar truck over here a lot of people will take glances over here try and get some info uh, deeper down towards the street obviously you don't have the same type of angle that you have towards this nero spot over here but you're still able to hold the same general area so it's just a different angle that you can take but basically it accomplishes the same type of thing the thing about this map specifically and those two spots in general is that you just want to have control of that a side obviously you know most of the times on defense teams will do like a one two one type thing where you have two guys playing towards the middle or somewhere aggro and then one guy holding each sort of site uh, by themselves kind of passively so that's a, a common thing that you'll see a lot of teams do and these are just two general spots that you can be on that off site towards this a side for your team we'll move on to more towards a s and d you'll see a lot of teams actually playing this little corner over here you can either use it to watch it towards this mid side to help anyone that might be towards this tank out or if you want to make sure that you're just holding off anyone that might be coming out of this cafe area so you're holding this cut too if you pop up from your prone position here you can actually get a little glimpse of the outer door so you can catch people off guard when they're exiting that door specifically but also what you can do is if you know that teams are hitting towards this a street you get the info from one of these guys you can turn around and look towards this way kind of help them out in that sense but it's a hard clear that teams are going to have to over chow in order to try and get you or have to teamwork you for so it's a really good spot to play if you have a teammate working with you towards that i've seen a bz i've seen gwen play that spot so if you're more of an aggressive type uh, but you don't want to get inside the dvd area or the cafe area this is a good general angle that you can hold for your team uh, if you have another teammate working with you another good spot another really common one is to play this corner inside the courtyard this is a really common spot for anyone that might be trying to hold uh, the mid cut to help out towards the b side but also be able to see any sort of mid push by the offensive side so it's a really flexible position because you can do either you know if you don't have anyone playing towards this tank side and no one can watch this mid cut you can be the person for your team to do that but you can also help out towards this mid side in case you have another guy towards this mid tank you know i even talked about it back a few months ago when we were talking about strats prior to the game even releasing you know you saw it back in the og mw two days but you know this double setup of someone in the courtyard someone at the tank it's just super powerful to take control of mid for this defensive side so like i was saying you can play off anyone towards this tank or even towards uh, this a corner over here so really good flexible spot for the defense inside the courtyard there and like i just mentioned a lot of times you'll see someone playing towards this mid tank uh, it's a really really common position because what you can do is you can help out anyone towards the b side by holding this mid cut you can also hold down all of mid get info on where you see teams rotating whether it's towards that b side or towards that a side you know if they're a slower team slower on offense where they're not really committing to a site generally in their search rounds and you know they're just playing a spread trying to play picks you can get a lot of that information for your team playing towards this mid tank and you can use that information to help out the rest of your team and basically guide them into what you're seeing and what you can expect on the offense to do and later in the round and you know if you even want to get some more information you can jump on top of the tank jump on top of the garbage cans over here kind of just spot check the enemy uh, and get some information there or you can even use this heady you know let's say you know they're pushing towards this a side you kind of want to help the other player on your team that's holding this side and you want to get some shots off you can have that good line of sight towards the a side too so you can be flexible and helping out the b side you can be flexible helping out the a side and you can get some information mid it's just a really common good flexible spot even better than the courtyard in my opinion so you'll definitely see a lot of pro players playing it but the big thing you want to make sure of is if you're playing this spot you probably need a trophy a lot of 
of teams will try and tack you out. So making sure that you either have a trophy or you're dodging those tacks or working off another player so that if they do push you because they think you're weak with those tacks, that they, you can play off of them and you can maybe sort of salvage that situation. So move on to the B side, common spots. You'll see maybe towards deeper, uh, towards this little cinder block over here. It's a good heady if you want to give up B and make sure that you're playing as a team on the retake. So if you're alone, kind of giving up B, but making sure that you work with your team to retake it once you have the numbers and the coordination for it. So if you want to play more passive, that's definitely a spot you can take uh, and make sure you're just playing off that retake. But if you want to play a little bit more aggressive, you can play towards, you know, this construction site over here. There's some different angles that you can take, whether it's a closer angle like this, where you can see the mid cut and call out for your team in case they're trying to hit, you know, a B to mid type push on offense. So you can call that out for your teammates or you can play, you know, a little deeper kind of angle so you can see a bit more of the enemy as they're rushing, you know, under these arches and maybe trying to take you out towards this B side, but making sure you're angling yourself well so you're not, you know, taking a straight up gunfight because most of the time you will be alone at this site. But if you do want to play with someone on the site, a really good spot is just to play behind this tank. You'll see this a lot with pro teams. You'll see them push towards this tank uh, if they have someone playing towards this broken side so that they can play off of them. And they're making sure that they're playing a little bit more aggressive, trying to get much more information because they have another player working for them so they don't have to worry as much on just getting singled out. So you really will see a lot of teams playing uh, this spot on the tank if they have another guy working with them towards the B side. So that actually leads me really well into the next aggressive positions over here towards the B side. And I'll actually denote this green just to you know set the difference between a more common passive spot versus a, a more aggressive uh, trying to get more map control spot uh, where you usually have a more aggressive player playing that. So you know if you want to play in this cruddy corner over here, a little bit more aggressive. Obviously, I wouldn't do this alone. This is something you pair up with another guy that's playing, you know, towards this tank, maybe towards this B side that's actually getting a little bit more info for you. And what you can do here is just play this corner and make sure that anyone that's crossing playing off of this guy's contact and you can teamwork them together. Or what you could do here, top broken, you can kind of play on top of this ledge over here and make sure you have the back DVD push for your team. So you have a really good angle back DVD, again, playing off of someone towards this B side behind this tank, really good for this. But what you can do here is be pretty aggressive. If you don't see anyone and you're trying to look at all these different angles, you're not really seeing anyone. This is an opportunity if you guys get some more information towards these guys on the other side of the map to start making a play and start activating. So you can start pushing up, maybe go behind towards this treehouse, take a light flank through blue or something. Try and get creative with those pushes, but make sure that you're actually clearing those angles because obviously they could just have a lurker guy playing, you know, somewhere on this street. So being careful while you're taking that route, also taking that risk could win you the round. So it is a risk that you can take, but you know, obviously there are going to be the more aggressive players that would be willing to take those type of risks. Another super aggressive move you can do is get inside this DVD corner. You know, if you instantly push from this mid cut, you know, get back DVD and just instantly push into this corner. This is a really risky push because obviously, once again, they're gonna be offensive guys towards this B street over here. So if they see you, you're either gonna have to chow them or if they don't see you, you can get pushed up into that position. But you know, most of the time teams will send at least one or two people here just to get some information towards this B side and possibly throw tacks, you know, towards this mid cut or deeper to make sure they're trying to get information on anyone towards this B side before they actually commit to anything. But you know, again, risky push to get up in there, but it is an option uh, that you might see in some pro play matches. We'll move on to the A side and more aggressive pushes here. So obviously on the A side, it's just gonna be all cafe. So it's pretty common on defense for pro teams to take control of this cafe and send two people inside of this, playing, you know, ratty corners, whether it's over here, over here, making sure they're trying to take away some map control from the enemy team by getting pushed up so aggressively over here. I personally don't like doing it alone. I like to have a teammate working with me if we're going to play aggressively like that, you know, if we're just playing a rank play match or a BPL or something like that. But it's honestly up to you. If you want to play solo there, just make sure that you get one before you die because you will not be able to get traded by a teammate if you're pushed up there alone. But honestly, it is great playing with two guys in here. You know, if you want to aggressively push right off the gate, try and see if you can get anyone on this cross, while also having a guy that's playing, you know, this front door and trying to chow this. If you want to just instantly chow 
corral both those angles, try and get a free pick like that. I might catch people uh, that aren't you know aware of it off guard. So if you're a more aggressive player, you might want to take those type of risks. But once again, if you're playing aggressive, pushed up in these positions, just be aware that on the offensive side, a lot of teams on this map play more spready, more picks, uh, you know, just playing info before they actually commit to anything. So if they get the information that you're in the cafe, it's pretty easy to play around and they can, you know, just rotate it back towards B or just single you guys out inside this cafe with tax. So just being aware that while you're playing aggressive like this, it is a possibility for them to just play off of that and uh, use that against you. So that's basically it for the common spots. I would say, you know, again, another common spot is on top of this white band, but that's just basically something that this guy who's playing passive towards the cinder block can go to. So usually you'll see him going back and forth playing those two different spots, but it is a spot you might see later in the round if they know that you're not going towards this B side and he can try and be flexible and help towards this A side by jumping up here and making sure that he watches uh, mid for you guys. But that's going to do it for the most common spots that pro teams are using currently. You know, I took this all from just general matches, nothing from scrims or anything like that. So this is all pro matches, things you have seen in VOD if you've been watching it. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys learned something that you can use in your gameplay yourselves. Thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next one.